Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be another entry into my design tool series. And in this series, I like to take a look at all the different tools that I have used or do use day to day in my design job, as well as for front end development. Let's take a look. All right, let's get into this for the first tool of the day. We're gonna be taking a look at svgporn.com. Probably could have a better name. I'm sure this sets off some IT filter somewhere if you pull this up in the wrong place due to the name, but great website, good resource for high quality SVG logos. So if you're a UI designer or a print designer, package designer, website designer, whatever it is, you've probably came across the need in your career for high quality logos for someone that you are doing a project for. Or maybe you're just doing a mock project, you're a student in school, and you're just trying to find some type of logo that you can use in your design. Now, often you have to go onto Google and you have to do the whole search for logo. So let's say we wanna look for IBM logo. We look that up, we get a bunch of results back. And then you have to come through here and find the one that has the transparent background. And of course these are PNGs or they're JPEGs and they're not high quality enough to be able to size up and down or to use for a printable project specifically. Uh, sometimes these will work for uh, some type of mock-up design or something like that, but it just depends on the size. So you have to find ones that are big, it just takes time. So any time that you have a resource that you can access to find high quality, especially SVG logos, this is a big deal because as we know, SVGs are sizable and they're vector format. So you're able to make them as big or small as you like without losing quality. And this is where SVG porn comes in because you can come up here. They have currently almost 1100 high quality SVG logos which is really cool. So let's do that search again for IBM. Now we have IBM here. No weirdness around this. Don't have to sign up for anything. Don't have to put any names in here, whatever. You hit download and there you go. You have your high quality SVG logo. So super useful resource for finding nice high quality logos to use in your designs. Tool number two for the day is getwaves.io and this is another SVG tool, a little different than the previous one we just looked at. This one is specifically for making wave designs with SVG. And this may be something that you use in a chart. Maybe you're trying to do some kind of area chart that you use in a design uh, for a graph or something. This could be a background to a website. A lot of uses for this type of thing that you could use an SVG wave for. And instead of trying to painstakingly figure out how to do this yourself. There is a nice generator here created by uh, Z Creative Labs at getwaves.io, which allows you to do this with ease. So pretty straightforward here. You have a couple different toggles, uh, really minimal toggles, which is nice, which allows you to create these pretty quickly. And then you can, of course, download. So you have a toggle here for the type of wave. And here you have more of a flat, almost cityscape uh, type of wave look. And of course, you can increase the amount of different waves inside. Then you also have this uh, kind of pointy polygon. This would be great for like an area graph or an area chart that you're trying to show in one of your graphs or designs. You can flip the direction so you can go top or bottom. You can change the color. So you can come in here and use one of their default colors and quickly swap that. Or of course, if you want to add your own custom hex code here, you can do that as well. They give you access to the saturation. So you're able to change the amount of color that is applied. And then you have this little slider to change the amount of peaks and valleys within that design as well. And I believe this is just like a random generator. They don't have uh, accessibility hovers on here, unfortunately. Uh, you might wanna do that to be able to see what each of these are. So it'd be nice if these just had a label here to explain what it is. I'm assuming this is just like a randomizer. So that's pretty cool. And then you can come down here, download, and it gives you the exact SVG code that you need. You can copy, you can download it and use it on your next project. Website number three is compressor.io. Now, if you do any type of front end development we all know that compressing our images and our JPEGs, our PNGs, SVGs, all of those types of graphics that we use in a design is extremely important for load times. You want to have the smallest, most efficient graphics possible in your website so you can reduce load times, especially for people who may be viewing your website on a mobile phone or something that is using cellular service and it's costing them extra money because they're having to download larger images for essentially the same result as something that would be compressed. So there's a lot of different tools out there that allow you to do this. There's like JPEG mini, PNG clean, a couple different ones, but they're usually specific to a certain file type. And the reason I like compressor.io is because it allows you to do all types of different formats here. So you can do JPEGs, PNGs, SVGs, 
GIFs, not GIFs, and WebP. So you can basically run anything you want through this uh, compressor. So let's take a look at how compressor.io works. I took the liberty of looking up some Denver Bronco images, big Broncos fan, and I found one from the Denver Post here. So we're gonna pull this down and I'm assuming this is coming off the Denver Post website, probably a website with 50, 100, 200 images on it at any given time, if not more. And if we drag this into the drop area right here, we're gonna see we started with 78, we saved 74% on the image size, and it's down to 19 uh, KB. That's pretty awesome, that's a big savings. And this is pretty important for someone that's on a cell phone that is trying to view your website. They're going off their data plan, so this is costing them more money. Uh, even for uh, a user in a low coverage area for Wi-Fi, so they just don't have good Wi-Fi speed, uh, this means the website is gonna take longer to load as well. And as we all know, you always want to try to make your website as quick and efficient and load up as quick as possible because you lose users if your website takes too long. I think it's like five seconds attention span or something that you generally get from a user. And if your website doesn't load up, they're off to the next thing. So you can see how compressor.io will go a long ways to allowing you to just drag and drop images in here, SVGs, whatever it is, save the size and the download times on your website and make a better experience for your users. Next up is cssgr.id, CSS Grid. I, I both love and hate when websites and applications use this extra domain extension to try to get fancy with their domain names. Uh, .com is always better if it's available, uh, just for readability in my opinion, but you know, it is uh, it is what it is. So what this website does is just gives you a quick resource on how to put together a CSS grid layout. And this is from Dan Netherton. So uh, thank you, Dan, for creating this very useful and what this allows you to do is come in here in a more visual way and say okay I want to do 12 items across and I want to have let's say 12 columns and I want to have a grid gap of let's say five that's the space in between all of your CSS grid items you can set max width and then of course what's really extra cool is there's a few things in here where it just gives you kind of these auto layouts. So just kind of a quick way, say if you're putting together like a masonry layout for your, your portfolio website and you wanna have your different images at different sizes and laid out in kind of this Instagram format, you can do that here. And then it just gives you quick access to the code here so you can copy the HTML as well as the CSS, put that on your website and you're done. So I keep this up, I'm getting much more familiar with CSS Grid. It's kind of a newer CSS layout technique, of course, that replaced floats and um, somewhat Flexbox, but it works with Flexbox pretty nicely too. And this just allows you to, in a more visual way, create these CSS grids without needing to hit up Stack Overflow or Google the specific syntax. Next up is typewolf.com. Typewolf helps designers choose the perfect font combination for their next design project features web fonts in the wild, font recommendations, and learning resources. So we clicked through to TypeWolf, and this was shared to me by one of my students a couple weeks ago. Very useful site. So a couple different links up here at the top, and you can see it's, it's covering what's trending in type. And what's cool about this is it shows actual examples of different fonts being used out there in the wild that isn't just your standard fonts like Roboto and things like that, you're probably getting off Google Fonts. Uh, these are uh, lots of different examples of some pretty interesting fonts and how they're being used. So what's cool is you can click on, let's say site of the day, and we can see here this website, we can just click directly through to coatpaints.com and then it shows you this website in use. And it looks like a Webflow website is my guess. But it's it's just a cool resource because you're able to come through and site of the day often has some pretty interesting things in it. But there's also these guides and resources here. So there's a bunch of great different books, different typography checklists, just a lot of documentation and great articles around typography, how to use it effectively, and then suggestions, of course, on different uh, design patterns and techniques that you can use with typography. So check this one out. I really like TypeWolf. I've yet to even really dig deep into this, um, but there's a bunch of different resources on here that I think you'll find useful for your next design project. That was the five resources I had to cover for you today. Hopefully you got some value out of these, and I have done a couple of these videos already, design tools number one and two, so make sure you check that out. I'll link those in the description above. Watch those after this video. If you did get value out of this, do me a favor, 
hit the like button. It's free for you to do, and it lets me know that you're enjoying the content that I'm putting out. Also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell if you wanna be notified of future tools videos like this one, as well as all the other videos that I do on the channel. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for your time. See you on the next video.